Right, yeah. Um, thank you very much to everyone for turning up, um, coming and hear me talk. Uh, I'll be presenting a descriptive study, um, Turbulence in the Financial Markets, Responding to COVID-19 Pandemic Policies, completely in collaboration with others. So we all know that COVID's around and it's not going away anytime soon. As of Monday when I was doing these slides, we had 104 confirmed cases, 2.3 confirmed deaths. Then um, we're looking over on the other side at, at the economic effects. So 4.8% drop in global GDP, about a 33.7% drop in the market index value for the S&P 500. And pretty much every single country has implemented some form of COVID-19 policy. So looking a bit more into the background, pretty much every country has implemented some form of policy, whether it's containment or closures, uh, economic like income supports or um, debt contract relief or health policies. And they, the severity of these range from the quite mild to recommendations all the way up to the severe lockdowns and border closures. Economic impacts, we have higher trade costs, negative productivity shock, increased health spending and financial stimulus. And various studies have looked at exploring uh, the market volatility, uh, volatility in, uh, with respect to COVID-19. Um, Zaremba, they demonstrate that more often than not, or unanimously, uh, stock market volatility is increased, um, but providing correlations only. And then only other one, one other study reports on the Hearst Exmer, but only for the EU. So our big question, how do COVID-19 social distancing policies influence the financial markets? Do they stabilize or do they destabilize? Uh, what are the differences across countries and how immediate or delayed are these effects? Our contribution expands on previous studies, uh, focusing on the effect of these stay-at-home measures. We employ a larger array of empirical tools to try and get a bit of a a more complete uh, view of the situation, I suppose. And we also consider more countries with representation across all the contents inhabited, uh, given that um, Antarctica is fairly well not inhabited. So data, we use three main sources here, the Google Mobility Reports, uh, we use the Government Response Tracker, and we also use market indices. Uh, we use value traded, which is the number of shares priced uh, summed across all security to try and get a comparable metric here. Uh, the methods we use, we have five steps. The first two stand alone, three and four feed into number five. So first we just have a bit of a look, see what's happening with the correlations. Then we go, okay, well, how are they temporarily related? First we relate, uh, do a unknown structural break. So you see, is there some sort of strong discontinuity? And then we see how that's related to the introduction of policies themselves. Uh, then we do the uh, log returns just to normalize the data. We get rid of the seasonal and deterministic trends and just keep the messy remainder. And we feed that into the MFDFA uh, to estimate the Hearst exponent and a market deficiency measure. So what are our results? Basically, we see that more often than not, the introduction of a pandemic policy introduces either a positive or negative swing in the market. We also see that more often than not, these actually stabilize the market, so make them a bit more efficient, right? Um, just down the bottom, running through, and I'll present this uh, also visually, but basically we see a sharp increase around uh, February, March. It sort of slows down a bit around April, May, and then June, it starts to pick up again. That's your second wave of COVID. Uh, most com countries are similar, except for China, which hits way earlier, um, as well as India, Philippines, and Indonesia. They're less sensitive to the global cases. Uh, for half of these countries, we find that uh, they actually implement the policy about two to three weeks before who declared the pandemic. So I guess they're acting on their own accord, which is great. And uh, we see that for the C1, 2, and 3 policies, uh, for the C1 and 2, uh, countries generally are stabilized, or their financial markets are generally stabilized. And then for the C3 policy, it kind of swings the other way. So firstly, you can just see here that around March, you got that uh, big rise there in traded value. 
and then again in June, sort of follows the, uh, the, the COVID curves there, um, first and second wave. Here we're showing uh, the correlation plots and you can see that you have those vertical lines there, which are the policies. Green is uh, the C1, so least strict. C2 is yellow, so that's the medium. And then C3 is uh, lockdown, that sort of thing. And um, we just point out those uh, countries who are you know, sort of significantly different. Uh, the structural breaks that we identified. So generally you can sort of see that they sort of around February so about that, you know, before the pandemic declaration for the most part, but after the first news report, that makes sense. And again, 54% of the countries have some sort of uh, positive or negative swing due to the introduction of these policies. Next, we're showing all the generalized Hearst exponents. So this is just for the C1, so the mild policy. So there's also, we did the same for the C2 and C3. Um, the estimated Hurst exponent, which is what we're interested in, is at H equals two or Q equals two along the bottom. We see that it varies greatly. Maybe that doesn't hold a lot of informational content, but that's okay. Um, more often than not though, they do stabilize the markets. And interestingly, in all but C3, so the most strict case, the least efficient market before policy improves, but in the most strict policy, this doesn't happen. So in summary, uh, stay-at-home policies more often than not elicit some sort of break, uh, whether a positive or negative. We know that it, they also more often than not tend to increase the market efficiency. So that's sort of like a stabilizing effect. And then the influence of these policies is not uniform across all countries. Thank you.